I am going to do a plant care video for y'all today. I wanted to bring some content to YouTube that was a little bit more positive and can get your mind off things. So if you're looking to start a plant collection um, after things are safer, then keep watching. I'm gonna just give my tips on how I take care of my plants. I'm going to do my best to generalize house plant care even though every single plant is so different and requires different care. Um, my first thing is I have reminders in my phone for watering um, certain plants that like to be watered once a month and then I have reminders in my phone for cleaning the plants that like their leaves clean like this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is bugs. Bugs can be super annoying and I've had my fair share of dealing with bugs, but I have kind of figured out a schedule and maintenance with my plants. <laughs> I'm sorry, one second. Whenever I buy new plants, they are quarantined from the rest of my plants to make sure that I don't spread anything that they might have. And I usually do that for a week or two because the life cycle of a lot of pests are like 14 days so if you bring a new plant into your home i highly suggest you keep it away from your other plants for a set period of time just to make sure it doesn't have any pests that could cause an infestation in your house not that house plant pests are like anything to worry about because they're really not um but that's my personal suggestion to not create something that you're dealing with further down the road. Okay, so the first house plant pest that annoys me <laughs> the most are fungus gnats. And it's because I had to deal with the fungus gnat infestation last year. I tried literally everything that there is to try to get rid of fungus gnats. And literally the last thing I tried was the thing that worked. And so that's why I wanna talk about that today. Okay, so if you don't know what fungus gnats are, they look like little black mosquitoes, kind of. And um, they like, when you walk up to your plant uh, and you like move it a little bit, like little black bugs will fly out. And they're not necessarily harmful if there's just like one or two but they do become harmful when you see them in every single one of your plants and there's like a million. But anyway, so I tried everything and the only thing that worked was nematodes. This is the brand that I buy. Okay, so beneficial nematodes are basically microscopic roundworms and they eat the larva of non-beneficial bugs I will fill up a bucket of water and put these in them and then water my plants as so. I buy these from my local plant shop, but I do believe they have a website and I will link it in the description box below. So if you have an infestation, I would suggest that you use these once a week, um, twice, and then move to two weeks and then after that just once a month until the infestation is gone and then after that you can just use it here and there for maintenance. Okay so scale is number two. I'll insert a picture here but also I have a great example that I'm going to show you on this plant. This is what scale looks like. So I just take them off myself. I just like take rubbing alcohol and I just literally like dab it on the scale and then take it off but because of everything that's happening right now there is no rubbing alcohol to be found and so I'm just gonna use neem oil today I am using this pure neem cold pressed oil and it is from blue lily organics so I usually just dip a q-tip in alcohol but today I am using a paper towel and I put a bunch of neem oil on it and wipe it up and down the plant stem. Since I have neglected this for a while, there are a few more scale than I anticipated, so I thought this would be easier. I will insert a picture of spider mites here. <laughs> spider mites, I 
just use some neem oil spray again and I just try to keep the plants that are more prone to spider mites um, moist. I notice that if some plants dry out too much when they're meant to be in tropical environments, they are more prone to spider mites, but I really haven't dealt with them too often, only on a few plants and I've gotten rid of them really fast and so I don't really find them to be a problem as long as you are keeping the moisture right. Okay, so the next one that I've dealt with is mealybugs. Mealybugs are really annoying, but I have found that you can get rid of them with soap and neem. So normally I do neem spray and soap spray separately, but today since I only have one spray bottle, I'm going to do two tablespoons of neem and one tablespoon of Dr. Broner's soap filled up with water. And then I'm going to go to my plant that has mealybugs and spray the plant with this spray. I keep it out of the sun so that the leaves don't get burnt from the neem oil. Okay, so that's it for pests. I'm not gonna talk about the other ones because I have not come in contact with them yet. I have also used green lace wings in my house. If that's something you're open to, then I will definitely put the link of the place that I buy them from in the description box below. They're like those little lime green bugs. I'll put a picture right here. I release them in my house so that they can eat um, things like mealybugs, scale, and the types of insects that live like on the leaves of plants. Um, and I find that that's very helpful so that I don't have to be like spraying them and bothering them with neem oil and soap and stuff like that. They can be a little bit expensive um, and that's why I don't use them all the time. Um, for like birds of paradise and other plants with huge leaves, you want to clean the leaves about once a month. I clean the leaves with a little bit of water and lemon or lime juice, whatever I have available. And I just put a like, a tablespoon in like a cup of water and then I just take a microfiber cloth dip it in the lemon water and wipe down the leaves okay so the next thing is water I try to water all of my plants in the morning because if you water them in the evening they are more likely to get root rot and then bring in bugs that are attracted to root rot and die so when you water them in the morning, they actually use the sun to help pull the water up through the roots and grow. But if you water them at night, they can't use the sun and it can harm them more than help them. So I definitely recommend trying to water your house plants before noon. So if you're the type of person that needs a little bit more guidance when it comes to watering, you can definitely buy a moisture meter. You want um, the moisture meter to probably read in the four range, like most of the time. And that's probably the perfect number for most house plants. It doesn't leave them sitting in too much water uh, and it doesn't leave them too dry. And like right in the middle. All right, so all you do is you stick it in. Okay, so lighting is the next thing and you kind of have to play around with lighting. I would say most plants enjoy bright indirect light. So if you need like a little bit more direction on where to place your houseplant for the lighting, I would look up the houseplant that you have and what direction it likes to be in and then take out your compass on your phone figure out where you could put your house plant. Like if it says it likes an east facing window, then go find an east facing window and put your house plant close to there. When I put plants by a certain window, I try to put them closer together because plants do better when they're closer together. They like the company, they like the energy of each other. And so I highly recommend if you're gonna put like two plants by a window, you put them close together so that they can feed off of each other and have a buddy. The next thing is soil. So I will do 50-50 houseplant soil and then cactus and succulent mix. Okay, so then I do worm castings on top. Um, worm castings 
are just uh, ground up like worm poop and it has a lot of nutrients in it actually and I find that that's the best for my plants. Okay, so another thing that kind of ties in with soil is the types of pots. <laughs> um, always use a well draining pot. Decorative pots are for you to put a pot that drains on the inside. Um, if you don't have a draining pot, then the plant doesn't have any place to drain the moisture in the soil and then you can overwater it and accidentally kill it. So definitely find a pot that has drainage holes in it. Some people like ceramic pots. Um, I like them outside, but I find that sometimes they hold too much moisture um, and I don't like that for my indoor plants, but for outdoor plants, I definitely love that. I try to collect cute pots from different stores that I go to. Um, I don't know where I bought this one, but Ikea has super, super cute pots and you can just buy them and then um, at your local plant store, they have tons of these, like not this one. This one, I don't know where I got this, but it's not from my local plant store. But you can buy just like those little plastic pots and then put them inside of a decorative pot. <laughs> okay, so I do believe that that's it for general houseplant care. Um, if you watch this all the way through, thank you. And I hope that this was enjoyable to watch. I hope that everyone has a great next two weeks. I hope that you're staying isolated and safe and healthy and happy and um, finding ways to find joy throughout the day and i will be back with another video soon probably with my sister because i don't like making videos without her it's really weird <laughs> okay thanks for watching bye